everyone and welcome back. Now today I've got four samples to sniff. They were sent to me by John Scented Snowdrops. You'll know him over on Instagram and probably from YouTube as well. And he's actually sent me eight perfumes, four of which are Amouage. So I decided to do this in two separate videos because I do really waffle on sometimes. We don't want the videos to be too long. So these are randoms. So we're gonna save the amouage for the next video. These are completely random perfumes that John has sent me to try. I know nothing really about them. So we're just gonna get into it. So the first one I've got here is from Plume Impression and it's called Reva Light. I had to actually go on John's Instagram to figure out what this really was because it, it, it says PI. <laughs> but I went on his Instagram and I found a uh, a photo of a very nice bottle and uh, he talked about Reva Light now I can't remember what he said about it I don't know if I even read the post but we're just gonna smell it I know nothing about this brand I know nothing about this perfume and let's just see I'm gonna try and keep these short if I can difficult for me but let's try okay now I do remember that I read this now because it looks like it gets compared to Parfum de Mali, Ojan, Killian's Angel Share and the other fruity tobacco vanilla tobacco not tobacco vanilla but the other fruity tobacco vanilla Herod is it no I'm not sure um Yes, it smells like those perfumes. I don't know if it's supposed to. I don't know if they, it doesn't look like a clone house. The bottle was beautiful. But I don't know. Um, it does remind me of Ojan. It does remind me of Apple. <laughs> Apple? <laughs> I'm saying Apple. And it does also remind me of a little bit of Gallagher's Rosé All Day. That fruity booziness, that fruity rich booziness. Yeah, I would actually say it reminds me of Rosé All Day. I think Killian's Angel Share is more vanillic than this from memory, but it's been a long time. It has a little smoke to it, but it's almost like it's um, liqueur smoking. Um, how do I explain that? The vapour from a very strong alcoholic drink and then imagine setting it alight. I get like a, just a little sharp hit of that. So yeah, it's it's definitely got a sweetness to it. It does smell vanillic. It smells like dried fruits. I don't, know, it's, I don't think it smells particularly that tobacco-y. A little bit, but it's more of a rich sweet dried fruits with a hint of smoke some spice a little bit woody vanillic it's definitely been done before quite a lot nice absolutely pleasant but it's probably a bit close to those popular fragrances that have already been done next up Dorsey Dandy Dorsey so this is more of a classic I understand it's more of a classic men's fragrance. I don't know if I've tried it before or not. Well, let's see what we get. Dorsé Dandy. I feel like I've smelled that before. Um, how do we describe it? Um, it's nothing particularly there's nothing about it that's particularly masculine at the moment, but also nothing feminine. So I would say at the moment, the way it smells is more in the middle, un unisex. It smells musky and clean. A little green. Reminds me a little bit of Le Mail. I don't know what that is. Is, is it that uh, wormwood, that sort of like um, slightly aniseed note it's musky green possibly a wormwood note in here I'm not sure yeah I guess the greenness is a bit masculine 
it's possibly dehydromersinol that I'm getting, which is in green Irish tweed, cool water, and a million other fragrances. Yeah, I think I'm getting dehydromersinol, which I, I don't really enjoy, and I do find that masculine. So yeah, that's what I think I'm... It, dehydromersinol to me smells almost like mouldy water. Um, I've never enjoyed it. And I, I, that's what I'm getting here. Like, but it's not really, it's not, uh, it's not unpleasant really. It's just a little bit stagnant water, stagnant pond, green pond, with some nice clean musk and something a little bit like wormwood, which is that aniseedy kind of note. Uh, not for me, just because of that. What I perceive to be dehydromersinol, totally not for me. But on someone else passing by, I think they smell quite good. But not for me. It's just box visionary eye. Just box. I, I kind of have written just box off. I smelt some in Paris, in the um, you know the big department store that's really famous. That I can't remember the name. Printemps. Printemps. I smelt them in Pronton in Paris a few years ago and they all smelt very synthetic to me so I've kind of written the brand off but let's uh, let's give them a go now oh this smells like La Mail. that's so funny this smells a lot like La Mail. minty musky it's not the same as La Mail. I don't think I get any neroli it's very minty icy fresh cool It's like jumping into an ice cool, put like turquoise but iced this colour um, next to a glacier. So yeah, it's icy. It's it might be. I I would say it's got a few notes in common with Le Mail. I'm not sure if there's a little bit of a cardamom or something. It's musky minty not toothpaste minty nice minty very fresh clean musky minty scent i like it actually it's really nice my guess is that it would appeal more to men just because it does feel a little bit like lamel but to me there's nothing that makes it one or the other so i'd say it's unisex Nothing scratchy at the moment, nothing annoying me. Perfectly pleasant, quite nice, icy, fresh, minty fragrance. Yeah, quite nice, quite like that. And then the last one, uh, the brand is called Eau de Mo. That's M-O-E, that's the brand. And the fragrance is called Amal, A-M-A-L. I know nothing about this and we'll see what we think. And these are such random fragrances. Things I would never normally seek out to try. Oh, that smells like Intense Cafe from Montel. Yeah, it it wouldn't surprise me if it, I don't know if this brand do clones or not I know nothing about them but this smells like coffee and rose coffee rose vanilla very much reminds me of intense cafe um, might be a bit more intense than that um, yeah I get a little bit It might be a little bit more synthetic if that's possible. <laughs> um, I'm not slating Intense Cafe or this because Intense. I loved Intense Cafe for a long time and I still think it's a good fragrance but it definitely doesn't smell like there's much of anything natural in there. This is a uh, rich and sweet. It's coffee with a shot of vanilla in it probably some cream on top quite sweet um, and some rose mixed in 
I would say it's more syrupy sweet than Montel's Intense Cafe. Wouldn't surprise me if there was a little bit of patchouli mixed in here. Or a caramel note. So it's more sweet than Intense Cafe and I think I smell something like caramel or a toffee, you know, something like that. Sweetening it up even more. If you like really sweet fragrances, if you love Intense Cafe, you probably don't need this. It's quite similar, like it's really quite similar. Like it's really nice. If a person walked past me wearing this, I would turn my head and be like, wow. I'll be thinking, there goes a the frag head. And I would be thinking they smell delicious. But if I wore this, it would piss me off after about an hour or so because it would just be too sweet. And I have a feeling, generally these really sweet perfumes are quite linear. Because they have such heavy, sweet ingredients, they tend to be very slow moving on the skin, if at all. Whereas obviously when you have lighter, more delicate molecules like your citruses and your musks, you get a little bit more movement and things change. Could be wrong there's a helicopter could be wrong but I have a feeling this will be fairly linear but it is very very pleasant if you like gourmands if um, I don't know what the price point is if it's a lot cheaper than intense cafe it could be an alternative so that is that that's all of the four random samples that John sent me and tune in for the next one which will be the four amouages which I think will be maybe a little bit more exciting so thank you for watching I'll see you next time.